Hey guys, this is Versatile from VSC Power, now hosted on the Money in Phoenix channel. Today's video tutorial, I'm going to talk about just real briefly the introduction of the Raspberry Pi. This is something I got about a month ago and I've been having a lot of fun with it and I'll probably make a little bit of these tutorial series on the Raspberry Pi. If you've been living under a rock for the last uh, couple months or God knows how long, the Raspberry Pi is basically a mini computer the size of a credit card. And you see this uh, this uh, acrylic case here? This case I bought separately off of eBay for about 10 bucks. Um, took me about 10 minutes to put it together, it's pretty cool. So when you get it brand new, it basically comes in a box like this. I bought it um, at a store, Micro Center, near my house here. So that's what I did. And then here, uh, you, it just comes with the actual circuit board inside. So we take a closer look at it. You got an HDMI port on the side. You got the SD card slot right here at the bottom. Uh, you got the power port right here in the corner. And then here, this is like a RCA jack to your TV. And then also an audio jack too. Here's two USB ports, uh, USB 2.0, and then here you have the LAN port as well. And then like I said, it doesn't come with a case. They got a lot of creative cases on uh, online that you can buy or at the store, depending on where you go. So this is my particular case. I think it's pretty cool. Um, translucent there. Um, in terms of the SD card, so if you're going to investigate or invest in the Raspberry Pi, I highly recommend that you get like at least a, a four gigabyte or eight gigabyte SD card class 10. So here's one example of an SD card I had. And in terms of how do you insert it, pretty easy. Right here on the bottom, insert it like, like so. And I'll have future tutorials showing you how you can create a bootable SD card. So you can do like say for example you want to do a mini HTPC or home theater PC. You can connect this to your TV through the HDMI port and use this awesome program, the XBMC program and stream movies, audios, uh, watch stuff on YouTube, do internet radio, stuff like that. So it's a lot of cool activities you can do there. And then we have other tutorials I can do in regards to like emulation, how you can play uh, SNES, NES, uh, connect like a USB controller to the Raspberry Pi and have a lot of fun times as well. And then if there's other tutorials that come up, I will certainly investigate it as well. So how do you power this thing? Like I said, I have this adapter that I also bought separately. This one is an iEssentials, but you can use a cell phone charger as well if it has a micro USB port. So this particular one, I got this one because it has a 2.1 amp output, which might be necessary to make sure that the Raspberry Pi is properly powered at all times. So this right here is the micro, micro USB port. So here I've just literally connected to my little charger there. And here the other end will go into the back of the Raspberry Pi, right? And here, you know, I just plug into the wall. So that's how you do that part of it. And then if you want to connect uh, additional peripherals, I got like a little USB hub here. So I can connect, you know, uh, additional, like my keyboard or something like that. But if you want to connect an external hard drive that is USB powered, I highly recommend that you get a USB um, wall powered uh, hub, basically. I take that back. So it's going to be a USB hub, but it's powered by the wall. Sorry. So that's what you're going to need if you want to do down, uh, go down that route. And then I've used all different types of um, um, input devices to communicate to the Pi. Like for example, I have this Hawking's remote that I've been using. Um, it's pretty cool. Basically, I plug this part of it into the jack, and then it uses the RFID, so I can go like this. I can control the mouse this way. Um, I can also I mean, I'll do a separate tutorial on this device. It's pretty cool. And here I can also like type in stuff too um, when it's connected. And uh, you can do that as well. So that's one example of one device I have. I have also used this particular one. This is like a Dell remote I've used to uh, navigate the XBMC uh, program, which is pretty cool. So I have this for, uh, as well. And then last but not least, I also use this type of keyboard at times, which is a Logitech keyboard. It has a built-in touchpad, which is really nice. And it's got the keys here, so that's really uh, great for where I don't have to use other peripherals and just do an all-in-one solution. So, actually, I am in the process of um, selling this guy and also this one. So, if you guys are interested, let me know, and maybe we can work out a deal. But uh, that's for another day. But, yeah, Raspberry Pi, like I said, is about the size of a credit card. Um, there's a lot of different uses out there. Um, you go on YouTube or Google, there's a lot of different creative projects. Or you can go to the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi main website. And look at what people are doing with it, turning into a mini home server, turning into a web server, uh, like I said, emulation, arcade machine, um, XBMC, home theater machine, 
Uh, you can use it as a like a makeshift router. Um, you know, stuff like that. There's a lot of great pro projects out there, and you can also create your own too. And if you're um, one, if you're like one of those guys or girls into um, coding and development, man, this thing is up your alley as well. Now, the cost of the Raspberry Pi, like I said, is about $35, depending where you go. It might be a little bit higher with taxes and stuff like that. But that's just the base board. So we're assuming that you will have a some type of um, cell phone charger to power the Raspberry Pi, for example, that you have a, a USB keyboard, maybe a USB mouse, maybe you have a USB hub. That helps keep the cost low. And then also, uh, you might need a SD card to also do your programming for um, the bootable images. So like I said, it's pretty cool. Um, my expectations were uh, were pretty low in the beginning because I didn't know exactly what the performance of this thing is going to be. But it comes at a 700 megahertz, which you can easily overclock it to one gigahertz. But I don't recommend that because you might get into situations where it may overheat and it may reboot itself. So usually I run it at about 800 or 900 megahertz, which is fine for a lot of my own applications here. So this is the Raspberry Pi, like I said. This is the B model, um, which has more RAM than the A model. So if you're looking, investing, and purchasing a Raspberry Pi, I highly recommend you get the B model. Um, like I said, it has more RAM. It's got a faster processor a little bit there. And it's got additional USB port. And it has an Ethernet port. So you can connect to the Ethernet. You can also connect a Wi-Fi USB dongle and you can connect online that way as well. So, sorry for my rant there. Hopefully that's a really quick overview. Um, you go to the more info section, I do have a link where you can find out more about the Raspberry Pi, and in the future I'll have more subsequent videos on this little device. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thanks for watching. Take care, bye.